do uh, today and this week. So let's get going. I know the Nobels is going to throw me off trying to figure out when to start. But. Carolyn. Why? Oh, wow. You're trying to throw it under the bus? Uh, these last two problems we have should go pretty quick. Now, they are exactly what we were doing in the section already, but they're worded differently, so some people feel like they're different. And then once we're done with this, uh, I've got an AP question, for a free response question for us to go over. And when I do them this week, uh, I'll probably try to set it up like an official one where I'll, I'll give you a timer of 15 minutes, see what you can get done during that time, and then we'll go over it and see how you would score. Six. Yep. Uh, it varies from two to four. Correct. Yeah, on Thursday I'll go over the, the actual order of the test you're taking and what you should bring and everything because I have a doctor appointment Friday that I forgot about. So on Thursday I'll make sure you guys are, you know, set to know what's going to go on on Monday. Uh, okay, half-life actually is zero difference. <clears throat> um, as long as you know half-life follows exponential rate, at exponential growth and decay, the half-life will start with the same formula. Now, I've seen plenty of textbooks not write it as CE to the KT where they used other variables. Kind of like for the money questions in ALGE 2 and pre-calc, they called them PERT. They just gave variables for specific things. Um, it doesn't matter though. So I'm just gonna use the same formula for all of them because then it's less you have to remember. So reading through this, it says your zircon sample contains 4,000 atoms of the radioactive element. I don't know what that is, uranium or something maybe? I don't know the elements. I feel like you guys should. No, I know. Is it 235? Oh, no. Oh. All right. Is there different versions of uranium? Oh, there are, yeah. There. Okay, well, I mean, I, that was my fault. I screwed up. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, so it has a half life of 700 million years. This is frequently how the question is going to be phrased and presented to you. And it's, it's them giving you the information in a different way. So you started off with 4,000 atoms. So that at time zero, you have 4,000. And then when it talks about half-life, it's literally telling you that half of the amount will be left after that many years. So if we started off with 4,000, then we will have half that amount after 700 million. Um, I'm just going to keep it in millions as to not have so many zeros. And then the question we're supposed to answer is how long would it take to decay to 125 atoms? So we're basically being asked to find a time where the answer is 125. So this is, this is the same setup as all of them that we've done but the way the information is given to you is slightly different because it's assumed you know things about half-life. Um, so 4,000 is our initial amount. That'll be C. <clears throat> Basically, because if I put zero in place of T, that turns to one. So I'll, I don't need to do anything on that. And then to figure out K, we use the second data point, the 700 million 2,000 atoms so 700 million years, I'll put 700 in place of T. Uh, equal to 2,000. 
Now, up above this, I am not a fan of you memorizing that. It technically does work. Um, the k value is always going to be ln of 2 divided, ln of 2 divided by your half-life number. The reason I'm against you memorizing that is because you already have a ridiculous amount of things to memorize. And finding k isn't super difficult. It's the same for all the problems. So this theoretically is true. And if you're really good at memorizing tons of things, this will work as well. Um, I've just, I've never memorized it because I've never needed to because I just find k. Because on the next step, I would divide by 4,000. I'd get 0.5. And then I would take the natural log of both sides. <clears throat> and then ln of 1 half will be divided by 700. Is there a negative sign up top? I didn't see one. There's supposed to be. It's supposed to say negative ln 2. Um, ln of 0.5 divided by 700 would be our k value. ln of 0.5 can be written as ln of 1 minus ln of 2. That's where the negative ln 2 comes from. <clears throat> and then once you plug in k, you just plug 125 in place of y to figure out the t value. Yeah? It is. So it is 700 million. When we're done, our answer is going to be in millions. So if you want to write it out fully as 700 billion, you can. If you want to let that number stand for millions, you can. Like, however you set it up is how the answer would be interpreted. If I plugged in 700 like I did, then it stands for millions. Yep. Do you guys feel like you need me to go through and figure out how to find 125 with you? <clears throat> I'm, I'm kind of just setting today up on however you feel like you need. Do you guys know how to solve this if you put 125 in place of Y? Okay, other than two people answering all I'm asking is if you want me to finish that and do that with you. Yes, okay. Yeah, you gotta advocate for yourself, like if you want help, like. Okay, if I put 125 in place of y, <clears throat> it's very similar to how we solved for k. We're finding t, so I would divide both sides by 4,000. Is that 140th? No. 136th? 32nd. Yeah, because there'd be eight in a thousand. Uh, your answer is going to be terrible looking. So I would take the natural log of both sides. T is going to be the natural log of 132nd divided by the natural log of 0.5 divided by 700. It's kind of an ugly answer for sure. Uh, it definitely could be simplified, but we don't need to because we're using a calculator. So numerator, ln, 132nd, Divided by <coughs> uh, I got thirty five hundred exactly. So this would be millions of years. 
uh, if you want to write it as actual number, go for it. I got to say, this is probably the first one I've ever done on Half-Life that worked out exactly. <clears throat> now, if did any of you change this to a decimal right away? I'm guessing this wouldn't have been exactly 3,500, but it would have been super close. Hmm. <laughs> it wouldn't be a good day without a noise. It's like routine at this point. You're going to throw the day off if you don't. Uh, are we okay with Half-Life? Do you want me to move on at all? Somebody want me to answer anything about it? Okay. <clears throat> so this is Newton's Law of Cooling, even though it never really says anything about it. Most textbooks you have will kind of have a separate section for Newton's Law of Cooling. It's giving you the differential equation. And you'll notice it's slightly different than our normal one where we would have dy dt equals ky. So it's slightly different. Partially because it gave us k, but then this has a number subtracted on it. And you're always going to subtract room temperature. So if I'm starting off with the differential equation, I'm going to want to solve it to find an equation that represents temperature of the object, current temperature of the object. Uh, now, it kind of throws me off here because H represents the temperature, T represents time. I'm assuming it's H for hot chocolate. <clears throat> now, if I'm going to integrate, I need to move things around. So I would need to multiply by dt. I would need to divide by H minus 75. So that's called separation of variables. That would have gotten us one point. This was going to be natural log because it's derivative on top, the original on the bottom. So this would give us natural log, absolute value H minus 75, negative 0 0.05 T plus C. And then I'm going to solve for H, kind of like solving for Y. Take both sides to E to the power. This would give me absolute value H minus 75 equals, and I'm, I'm going to kind of skip a couple steps um, because I feel like you're used to it by now. The plus C here becomes a multiplier of C in the front. If you need me to show you that step, I certainly can. I was just trying to save space a little bit. And then once I have the C here, I can remove the absolute value symbol because the plus and minus get absorbed into it. So on these cooling questions, um, really all that happens is that you're going to have plus room temperature at the end of the general solution. So you are technically allowed to just write this out with the room temperature added at the end. I just didn't, like I said, I, I don't like to present things for you to have to memorize a ridiculous number of facts. Like it just becomes too difficult to do things. So once I get here, um, I want to find C, which is not going to be 160. This plus 75 throws off. I can't just put the initial amount in place of C because of the plus 75. <clears throat> so if, if I'm plugging in zero time, 160 degrees Fahrenheit for temperature, I'm going to get E to the zero, which is one 
plus 75, so I'd have to subtract 75. So this is the one situation where the initial amount cannot be just put in place of C. <clears throat> now technically it didn't ask for the general solution or particular solution. It wanted to know what would be the temperature 10 minutes later. So then you would put 10 in place of T. And then that one's just to calculate. Now, it's been kind of a while since we did anything with calculators, I feel like. I mean, like, we've been using them in our homework, but we haven't really had a chance to go through them much. So I, I kind of purposely picked a free response question today for you to use your calculator on. So I'm hoping everybody has one with them. If not, the problem's kind of impossible. If all you have is your phone calculator, maybe go to desmos.com or something. That might work. It does feel weird that your test is a week from today. <clears throat> At least, if nothing, it'll be a huge weight off of your brain once we're done. I mean, yeah, I know, but the tests are going to feel easy by then. Just trust me. Okay, I've got my timer set. Does anybody still need to get their calculator out? Still need to get out a sheet of paper to do the question? Well, yeah, I mean, I, oh, I wasn't handing it out to you. I was just going to put them up on the board. I've already gotten yelled at for how much paper I've printed this year, so uh, our packets used up a lot of paper. I basically printed two, three reams of paper for every student, and uh, I've got, what, 70 calc students. Each ream is like $9. Oh, paper is super expensive now for, for whatever reason. They're still pretending that like they're having trouble getting it. Yeah. Okay, are we ready? This is a calculator question. Try to write your answers the way that you would on the free response test. 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So the way they do it is they're going to give you the two calculator free response questions together, and they'll give you 30 minutes. So it's 15 minute average. One of them usually goes a little bit faster, one goes a little bit slower. And then the non-calculator portion, they give you the four of them at once, and you get an hour to do it. So it's, it's kind of hard to pace yourself, but you will be in the gym where there's a lot of clocks all around, you're allowed to have an analog watch on your desk if you want to keep time that way. <clears throat> um, however, if you have a watch that beeps, uh, like if you have an old digital watch, I don't, you guys probably don't even have those anymore, huh? Does anybody have a, yours is analog? Yeah, analog. Uh, if you have one that beeps, they take away your test and kick you up. Yeah, so it's important that you have a watch that it's just like low tech. Yeah. Otherwise, there's clocks in the gym. <clears throat> uh, this should be it. There it is. Okay.
particle movement. Uh, if you can't read that very good, you're more than welcome to come up here or take a picture of it on your phone or whatever. This isn't like an official test. Preferably not reading it out loud. <laughs> Uh, value would find the answer. Be like a number answer. Tell me how to do it during the problem. That like totally defeats the purpose. Um, don't forget, these questions are traditionally separate from each other. So even if one of them just really is stumping you at the moment, do the other ones. Just do what you can on every problem. And even if you know how to start a problem but can't finish it, do what you can. That's kind of how the points are given out.
still got six minutes left too, so don't feel like you're super rushed. Good question. Is there like a easier way to just do that on the calculus? Like having brackets? Is there a way to find like the intersection without having a lot of bracket? And like is there a way to set the equations equal to each other? Uh, there is, but I, to me it's not as uh, reliable. Right. Like the solver is what science chemistry is with a lot of. Um, the graphing is probably going to be the most efficient because you'll already have the equations in from the other stuff. safety question. Uh, there is no unit, there's no units given the problem, so there's no label needed.
Okay. Well, did that one, how that one, was that one doable? Okay. So it's plus, it's kind of shocking how fast the 15 minutes goes past when you're trying to do the one question. I mean, it's, it's obviously not one question, but still. Um, in my opinion, there's usually going to be at least four of the six questions that when you guys look at them, they should feel doable like this. Like, uh, it's easy to make minor mistakes or like write something wrong so you don't get all the points, but you should realistically not feel scared on most of the free response questions. Like we've gone over enough of the stuff this year that it should look familiar to you by now and not, not make you feel horrified, right? Now, there's always seems to be one question every year that for some reason everybody just like completely dislikes. Um, I think this particular year was a question about stocking bananas on a grocery shelves. Uh, it's usually like one sort of a real world problem that it's just strange. Another year they had it with potatoes, uh, planting potatoes. Um, different year was a Newton's Lab cooling one with pizza in an oven. So, okay, anyway. Um, I wanted this one done because I thought you could use the help on the calculator. So here is the scoring guide. Question number one. You'll see that there's just one point given for this one, just if you got the correct answer. Now, I'll go over with you how to find that, if you didn't know. Okay, in the calculator, I put that equation in Y1. Y2 will be for the last part, but I put it in for Y1. And when I graph it, if I want the derivative at a certain location, I go to the calculations menu. Number six is for derivative. And then I believe it was at x equals three or time three. Yeah. Okay, so then I would just hit three and hit enter. <clears throat> and there's my derivative, negative 2.118. So there wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be anything done by hand. Typed in. Okay, oh. Yes. Okay, so first thing that has to be done, the equation has to be put in for y1 or y2 or whatever. <clears throat> uh, I changed my window from 0 to 3.5 because in the problem it told you that t was only between 0 and 3.5. So when I graph it, that's why I only have 0 to 3. It wouldn't be wrong if you still had negative 10 to 10. But I only wanted to look at this. And then it asked us to find the derivative at 3. So on a calculator, there's two ways to find derivative. One way is from the graph. So second calculations, derivative is number 6. And then if I want the derivative at 3, I am not going to use the left and right arrow to move to 3. I'll just hit 3 and hit enter. And then it would give me my derivative right there. The second way to do it, if you don't want to use your graph screen, is if I hit alpha window, there's going to be a derivative button there for number three. <coughs> uh, I, could, I could take the time to type the equation in again, but I don't want to. So I would like y1. y1 is alpha f4. So by playing around with your calculator during the year, you're supposed to kind of be semi-comfortable with these buttons by now. And then I want the derivative at 3. Now my guess is almost every single person here would rather do it from the graph, which is why I showed that one first. This is technically quicker, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so there's number one. Number two says find the position at time 3. Well, if I integrate from 0 to 3, I would get position 
because I'm integrating velocity, position at three minus position at zero. So the integral from zero to three uses both of those numbers to find how far apart they are. <clears throat> you were told position at time zero in the original problem. And then the integral from zero to three, you just type in. So I would, that's what's written here. I believe they rearranged it already. The position at time three is the initial position plus how far you went from zero to three. And then you would essentially type this in your calculator. Now you'll notice, you'll notice that they scored points for you actually writing down the initial condition. So I wouldn't be too shocked if some of you just did all of the work on your calculator and then wrote an answer down. The portion that you type in the calculator, like the integral, you don't have to show any of that work. But when you need your calculator for more than one step, that's usually what you're going to have to write down on paper what you did. So like right here, this is, you could have written this in steps. It doesn't have to start with this. So if you've got the integral from 0 to 3 equal to position at 3 minus position at 0, you would find this answer in the calculator and then put in whatever it was equal to. And then you would write 5 in place of position at time 0. And so you, you were given one point if you wrote down that you needed to use the 5. If you just wrote down integral 0 to 3, <clears throat> they would have given you the one point. If you had the correct answer, they would have given you the one point. But if you didn't write down that part, they wouldn't have. Yeah? So if I, I have the 5, but I used it incorrectly, so would I get two points in that sense? I have the 5, but I used it incorrectly. Did you get the right answer? No. One point. Um, when it says use as initial condition, they mean uses it correctly. instead of writing the equation? Yeah, absolutely. So in, in the word problem, if they write down v of t equals that, you don't have to write this because it already states that they're the same. So if you write down v of t, that absolutely saves time. OK, third one. Uh, this is basically the difference between net distance and total distance. Now up here, they refer to it as displacement. Um, I would assume you writing displacement or net distance would give you the points. Do you want me to go over how to find these answers on your calculator? Wait, you do that value yep. Figure so most of you figured out the top one okay, probably. The 0 to 3.5. Oh, that's not the calculator. So if we need to integrate I'm going to go to F2. <clears throat> Number four is the integration button. 0 to 3.5. Now, I've already gotten the equation in because I didn't want to keep retyping it. So that's why I go to F4 to number one. This would be net distance or displacement. Basically, from where you started to where you end would be this far. If we want absolute value for total distance, I'm going to type very similar, um, 0 to 3.5. And then before I get to the equation spot here, the absolute value symbol is under math. If I move over to number stuff, it's absolute value. I mean, this is basically all the buttons that deal with direct number values. So then the absolute value symbol's there. Now I would just type in y1 or type in the equation again. I mean, like, you could do that every time. It's just so slow. <clears throat> and then this would be the total distance. 
Now, for you to get your, oh, I keep going to the wrong one. For you to get your full points, you would have to write out a sentence saying what it stands for. You don't have to write out a grammatically correct sentence, but you do have to have the words that say the same thing. You could say the integral from 0 to 5 of v of t dt is displacement or net distance. Um, I wonder if they would give you full credit if you left off the time 0 to 3.5. What did the original question phrase it as? Oh, the original question didn't say what the 0 to 3.5 stood for, so you would have to add that in. It kind of just depends on what the question is phrased as. and um, That's usually the most annoying portion of these questions. I would bet since this is two points, <clears throat> I wonder if they would, it doesn't say what it would do. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if you got one point for having the correct info and answers and then one point off for not having the time with it or something. Oh, actually one point for answers. And then the last one, not that it was, oh, go ahead. From everything I've heard, correct. I mean, however they score it, they do it the same for everybody. So, like, I, I know what they usually do is they'll have, like, 30 people that all score one question. And ahead of time, they have a scoring guide that's way more thorough than this where they <clears throat> will look for things in particular or certain things to distract points. Um, but that group of people essentially is sort of in charge of that. So if for some reason they decide half points, they could. But if, from everything I've heard, they don't. They don't, like, release it to us. They make it sort of secretive. Okay, and then very quickly, the last one. Last one was pretty easy if you realize they gave you the position function. So you would have to take the derivative of that, which is what this first portion is, right? The velocity is the derivative of x2. And then you would get one point for writing that out. <clears throat> and then the correct answer would be found. There's different ways to do it. I found the easiest way was just to graph both and then find where they intersected. Um, there's different ways, but I find this one the quickest. So they cross at one spot. I would go to the calculation menu like I do for everything, find where they intersect. <clears throat> uh, first curve, so it's on the blue one, so I hit enter. Second curve is on the red one, so I hit enter. And then guess, I put the cursor close to where they cross hit enter, and they intersect at time 1.571. If you notice the answer key, it says 1.571 or 1.570, because you're allowed to round or truncate. So if you just chop it off after three decimals, that's correct. If you round and it goes up, that's correct. They accept either. They just Three decimals is the important piece to remember. Um, I know it does say it in the instructions when you're taking the test, but everybody's usually so worried and anxious at that point, they don't hear half the instructions. You can put more than three, they don't look past three. Oh, no, it's not, you can write as many decimal places as you want. They, they just, they won't look past three decimal places. 